Hi, my name is Tal Eden and I'm the CTO and former Chief Data Scientist at CurveTech. Here at Curve, we optimize sales processes. Uh, we create sales forecasts, uh, we optimize inventory and much, much more. Now to the point of this presentation. People often think of their AI components just like they do of any other software component. They think you can develop your AI and then put it on the shelf for a couple of months and then when you need it again, take it off of the shelf and reuse it. For example, people would develop a uh, sales forecasting system, use it to create the forecast for, the, for this quarter, then let it lay for the rest of the quarter, then take it at the end of the quarter, try to generate new predictions for the new quarter, and they find out, sadly, that their sales prediction system does not work anymore. In this presentation, we'll try to understand this phenomena. We'll try to understand why it happens now more than ever. And then we will discuss a few ways of how you can deal, the, deal with this phenomena. We'll start with a few examples. In the past several years, we saw many, many, many events. Here are just a few that had a global impact. For example, we had the collapse of the Lehman Brothers Bank. We had the Arab Spring. We had the launch of the Me Too campaign. And last, but most certainly not least, the COVID-19 outbreak. <clears throat> now, try to think of these events from a data perspective. It would be quite amazing. Imagine you are a trader trading in Lehman Brothers stock. Nobody, maybe just a bunch of few really, really smart people could have predicted the, the collapse of this stock in the upcoming morning after the initial news. Or imagine that you were invested in the, the upcoming Harvey Weinstein uh, production uh, just before the launch of the Me Too campaign. Or imagine that you had an e-commerce store and you generated sales predictions for the upcoming future and suddenly all the brick and mortar stores closed because of the outbreak and all of a sudden your sales have a spike of 700% and your predictions are no longer relevant. The point of these examples is that the time constant it takes for such things to happen is gradually growing shorter and shorter. It's changing. What used to take years takes months. What used to take months now takes days. And what used to take days is something that we have to uh, adjust to on the fly. Now, in order to understand why this is happening, we'll start by discussing the idea of concept drifting. Concept drifting, we'll start with a dry technical definition and then try to exemplify and make it clear. It's when the statistical properties of the target value, which, we, uh, which uh, the model is trying to predict, change over time in unforeseen ways. Now, this is a very dry definition. In order to understand it, we first need to understand what a model or a learning model is, and then uh, try to use an example to see what happens to it over time. So let's use a very uh, simplified example. Let's say we are trying to predict which COVID patients are going to require respiratory assistance. What we do is take their age and their weight, and according to these two parameters, we want to see who will deteriorate and who will not. In order to do this project, we start by tracking a bunch of people, a bunch of COVID patients over time, and we mark those who did not need the respiratory uh, assistance with the blue dots, here you see it on the left, and those who did with yellow dots, you see it on the right. After we uh, created this initial sample, what we call our training set, we create a line, a simple line that separates the two. After we have this line, we can forget about all the dots. Now we have a new patient, a new patient. We measure his, uh, his uh, weight, take his age, and see if he falls left of the line, we predict that he's not going to need respiratory, respiratory assistance. If he falls right of the line, then you should get your uh, respiratory machine ready. Now this is a very simplified version of how a learning model would work. Drifting is when this distribution changes over time. Let's say this is how the distribution looks initially. You can see it in the slide. And then, let's say that uh, in the first wave, a lot of people died. And then a lot of people recovered. And then you have a different population uh, dealing with this, uh, with this illness now. 
And let's say there's a vaccine that comes into the picture and suddenly you see that the way the data distributes changes over time and you can see that our model does a very poor job differentiating between the two groups now. What we need to do in such cases, first of all, this is what we call drifting. Now, what we need to do in such cases is try to retrain our model, create a new model, a new line, or just uh, think of another concept of how to differentiate between those two groups. Now, this is what we refer to uh, in data science as concept drifting. The data skews and shifts over time, and suddenly our initial learning model is no longer relevant. Now, it's quite difficult, but it's possible to deal with concept drifting. There are three main principle, first, uh, principles. First, you need to continuously monitor your performance. See if you have deterioration, if it changes, you can manage, you can, you can measure your performance. For example, uh, in this, uh, in the COVID-19 example, with every new patient that comes into the system. And then, as often as possible, try to retrain your model. In our example, just slightly adjust the line after every new case or every couple of hours or every couple of days, just keep it up to date. And when the initial mathematical model, the initial line doesn't work anymore, you should have a few other solutions in your pocket ready to implement when the initial model does not work anymore. So sometimes you need to create a new model to remodel when the old one deteriorates. Now, while this is a very complex uh, problem, it's the less complex problem of the two because drifting happens over time. In the examples I showed in the beginning of this lecture, we saw that drifting sometimes happens overnight or over a very short, a short period of time. <clears throat> Let's look at a few examples. <clears throat> in the uh, Microsoft offices here in Israel, in Kfal Saba, there is a monitor and a camera. And this camera uh, takes a, a video shot of everybody coming in. It looks at their faces. And it says which emotion you're feeling. It's a very nice example of AI at its best. It works lovely. And it looks at your face, feeds it into a learning model. You see it here. It's a convolutional neural network. And then, for, in exa for example, in this uh, picture, it would say that this man looks surprised. If you do a sad face, it would say you look sad. If you do a happy face, it would say you look happy. Now imagine that we have the COVID outbreak and suddenly everybody looks pretty much like this wearing a mask on their faces and the system becomes unusable overnight because the algorithm cannot use what it used to, I don't know, her, her uh, mouth expressions or her cheeks or uh, I don't know, like 80% of its uh, features are lost now. Another great example is uh, a very, uh, was a big scandal in 2015 when the Google tagging uh, uh, system tagged two black people as gorillas. People accused the algorithm of being racist, they accused the engineers of being racist. I think that the main uh, reason this happened, and this is an educated guess, but I think that the main reason this happened is that the system was shown pictures of white people, and it was shown pictures of gorillas, and each were tagged properly, and it was not shown pictures of black people uh, tagged as people. And uh, the system could not learn what, what it was never shown. Is it racism? That's for you to, to determine. Now, the same thing could happen if you have a sales forecast before COVID-19. If you have a sales forecast before COVID-19 and suddenly the, the data shifts overnight, then you have an issue. You show the system data of which it has never seen any examples, and suddenly your system becomes useless. Let's look at a case study, which we will use in the upcoming examples. In uh, Curve, one of our customers is a very big uh, uh, cosmetics uh, supplier in the United States. And uh, after the COVID outbreak, we saw a significant shift in their data. First, we saw a 90% decrease in the brick and mortar sales, then we saw a 700% increase in their online sales, which nowadays that doesn't look surprising, but back then it was uh, very alarming. And we saw that the increase in the online sales is restricted to shampoos, conditioners, and commodities, not really to lipstick, which nobody sees behind the mask. 
As a result of these changes, first of all, drifting did not happen over time, it happened overnight. The model accuracy uh, deteriorated, uh, the tools became unreliable, and we had to redevelop uh, tools that, we were, that were working fine up till that point. Now, let's try to look at a few of the uh, principles we followed in order to deal with this. Is, and it's something I suggest that everybody using an AI component within their products or AI within their operational uh, uh, organization, I suggest everybody use it. And the principles are five simple principles. We'll go over them one by one. What can we do to avoid this? First of all, when possible, avoid using machine learning solutions. Machine learning is great. Everybody talks about machine learning. Everybody talks about AI. But if possible, don't use an AI solution. Don't even use a statistical solution. If you can, use an analytical solution. Okay, if instead of doing a projection based on a machine learning, on a learning machine, you do a projection based on A times X plus B, that's better. Let's look, let's look at a great example, which I really like. In this slide, you see a neural network, which I created in order to predict the length of the hypotenuse based on the length of two lines in a right angled triangle. What we do is feed the two lines into the uh, learning machine, we feed a lot of these examples, and then we see how the, uh, how the learning machine performs over time. You see that if we have tens, uh, if we use ten triangles as ex as uh, learning examples on the left, we get a relatively high error. And then the more triangles we use, the uh, smaller the error gets. When we use ten thousand uh, triangles, we see that the system performs great. I mean, you have an error of less than one millimeter per kilometer, which is an amazing performance for a learning machine. And while this machine performs wonderfully, it's a very silly solution as the right solution to this uh, problem, which is simpler, takes less complexity, and takes no time to implement, will be to use the Pythagoras theorem. The second example, try to create predictions for multiple scenarios. If you create predictions for multiple scenarios, you might not predict exactly what is going to happen, but you let the stakeholders within your organization plan ahead. Let's look at an example. Let's say we are trying to create a sales forecast and we use the past sales, the product features, and so on and so forth, everything we used up till now to create the sales forecast. And then we have a few new features we use. The school closures, the quarantine data, what we used to do up till now, feed all this data into a learning machine, and then spew out a projection on the other side. You're gonna sell, I don't know, uh, 800 lipsticks next month, 800,000 lipsticks. Now what we can do is predict according to each feature and try to simulate the prediction. Create a first prediction uh, based on the fact that there's going to be a quarantine next month. Create a second uh, prediction based on an alternative reality in which there's not a full quarantine but school closures next month. And a third, predictions, and a third prediction in which there's no restrictions. Now your prediction is not accurate because you have three of those. I mean that's, that's not a fair game. But you can let your uh, company plan ahead for each scenario. Third, try to increase your prediction frequency. If you used to predict a month ahead, two months ahead, three months ahead, switch to predicting daily. If you used to predicting daily, switch to um, hourly, or I don't know, predict as often as possible and don't settle with uh, uh, low granularity predictions. Also try to retrain more often, and to remodel more often. It's a good practice nowadays when uh, data is changing rapidly. If, for example, you have a sales forecasting system, retrain it daily, run it daily. See that the predictions are not deteriorating and try to see any slight uh, variations and shifts in the data. Fourth, assign higher weights to recent data. Now I'm not gonna get into the technical details here, but for example, if we have four years of data, <clears throat> we can use the four years of data to teach our learning machine what the, up, how to predict the future of our sales. But the wise thing to do would be to use the full scale of the data, but to assign way higher weight to the last couple of months in which we had the outbreak, and even higher weight to the last month in which the closure got to a specific state. And fifth, 
I'm not going to talk about the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning as it is far beyond the scope of this lecture. But for those of you who do know the difference, there is no reason to limit yourself to supervised learning solutions. Most of the industry uses supervised learning solutions up to date, although there are a lot of solutions that do not rely on these uh, set of algorithms. Unsupervised learning solution, solutions and reinforcement learning solutions are less vulnerable to uh, drifting. Now these are the five principles I suggest in order to avoid, or not to avoid, but to cope with the drifting fast and to adapt as quickly as possible. And the key takeaways from this lecture. First of all, global impact events are happening at a higher rate than ever. We used to see such events uh, once every century, and now in the past 10 years we've seen like five. And we probably have a few more coming, even though we don't like to think about it. These events have a negative impact on humanity as a whole, but let's leave that aside. It also has a very negative impact on the performance of our AI components. It hampers the, the, the performance as much as uh, sometimes it completely renders them useless. But the point of this lecture is not to uh, encourage you to stop using AI, but rather to use it wisely and know how to adapt. In order to adapt, you should follow the next five principles. First of all, avoid using machine learning based solutions when possible. When possible, use analytical solutions. If you can use a simple linear equation, a times x plus b instead of a forecast, that's better. Do that. Use machine learning solution when you are forced to. Second, create predictions for multiple scenarios. This helps your stakeholders within your organization get ready to whatever happens and plan for whatever happens. Third, increase your prediction frequency. If you use to predict monthly, do it daily or hourly and remodel more often and re, uh, retrain more often. Fourth, assign higher weights to recent data. Data from the past couple of months is more relevant than data from two years ago. Make your data show it. Make your models take that into account. And fifth, do not rely solely on unsupervised learning solutions. Thank you everybody for taking the time to uh, listen to this uh, short lecture. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Uh, have a great uh, continue of the, of the convention, and I hope this is a very uh, fruitful and educating day. Bye.